Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome. This is Pigeen, and we are, I am thrilled, not just a little bit thrilled, I'm super thrilled and excited because I have a dear friend, Vernice, Fly Girl Armor. Now, you may think you know what it's like to have tough. You don't know tough. You don't know gutsy until you start meeting my friend, who is also the keynote speaker for the Martin Luther King celebration here in Jacksonville, Florida. And she's going to be doing a lot of different speeches around town. She's ready. I mean, she's awesome. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction of who she is, and you'll see why she's awesome for Pegeen TV. And I lost where you are. Where are you, baby? Watch this, everybody. Captain Bernice Armour was uh, making history as a combat pilot in Iraq. Take a look. Bernice Armour made history in March of 2002 when she became the first African-American female combat pilot in the military. Come on out, Bernice! You won't let anyone down when you lift your group up with the high-flying, history-making Bernice Armour and her timely message called Zero to Breakthrough. Wait a minute. You're black. Did you have any obstacles? <laughs> yes, I did. I had a few. I had a couple. But that's not the point. What I come back with is everyone has obstacles. Even the average white guy has obstacles. Right, Lenny? That's right. <laughs> well, everybody, I'm telling you, that's we're just going to start because I want you to really get to know who this woman is. And I want you to really hear the power that she has. She has a new process, new new excitement to share, and it's called Guts, Gutsy Leadership. So I'm going to give a quick hello to Bernice, and then we're going to do my intro. So hold on. Hey, Bernice, how are you? Hey, 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 fantastic. Boom, ready to blow it up with you? Boom. You know, I keep on thinking, when I speak to you, it's not just boom, it's kind of boom, boom, exactly. boom. Exactly, exactly. Power women getting together. Let me tell you something. We're about to rock and roll. For everybody that's here, you are on Pegeen TV, and I'm glad that you're here. Thrilled that you're going to learn from one of the best of the business. And here's my song that I just lost. So I'm going to stop that. Anyway. <laughs> Well, that's hey, the game power. Out. You know, the power. technology, there are always gremlins in the technology. Hey, acknowledge the obstacles, don't give them power. Didn't you just hear my video say that? Yes, let me tell you something. You are 100% right. We wouldn't be here if we weren't talking about gutsy leadership. Bernice, give us, um, you know, I love you. And you've had so many incredible experiences. You certainly have been out there in the world. And you have worked in male-dominated fields, obviously. You were a former cop, became a Marine, became a pilot, and now you're one of the world's top speakers. Share with us this new venture that you have about gutsy leadership. Why now? Why? Uh, there, were, there were two major reasons. Number one was a business reason, believe it or not. Uh, because I knew the brand that I initially launched my business on was about America's first African-American female combat pilot. I mean, that is history, yes, uh, but it, I felt it also had a shelf life, right? So what uh, would keep me relevant in the marketplace, right, as far as a businesswoman, yes, a veteran and all that stuff, but the, the Iraq war has been going on for 15 years. So, you know, I always kept in my mind, W. Mitchell said, how do you help them make money, save money, or save time? Make money, save money, or save time. And when I looked at my story, yes, the leadership lessons out of that and my experiences, uh, but as I was trying to reinvent myself, 
I said, you know, what, what's the bigger picture? What's, what's the bigger picture out of you have outside of you have permission to engage. Right. Uh, and let me just give you a step back on that. When I was flying my attack helicopter over the desert, protecting the men and women on the ground, before we could take out the target, take out the enemy, the ground controller would actually have to give us permission to engage. And he would say, you have permission to engage. Well, here at home, there are no ground controllers in life. You are your ground controller. If you don't give yourself permission, who will? This now, is a really powerful statement that you're having because you just said two things that I want to capture. One is about the power of reinventing yourself. And even though you are out there, you're known, you still are stepping, taking steps to reinvent yourself. And I know you're going to be talking about that. The second thing that you just said is about this permission to engage, um, yeah. that there is no ground control doing that. And I love your T-shirt about gutsy. And That's certainly right. love your fly girl in the background seeing over there. So going on, tell me about how gutsy and this reinvent yourself and that it's good for business. Talk to right. me a little bit about that. So obviously corporations love the engagement aspect, whether it's engaging with employees, the leadership, the community, uh, growing our market share. It's all about engagement. So I didn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, but I also wanted to move myself away from people seeing so, me so much as a military speaker because I wasn't really a military speaker, even though I was leveraging my law enforcement and military background, right? Yeah. So I said, well, what did it take for me to do these things? And what I heard so many people say is, you know, how did you have the courage to do that? How did you do this? Well, like, weren't you scared? Or what about the obstacles? And I remember talking to... Um, uh, a, a coach of mine, actually, and she said, you know, Vernice, what has helped you create quantum leaps in the last three years? What three things have you done over and over again? I said, well, I definitely had a coach. I had mentoring. Um, I professionally network with my peers. Uh, um, I invest in myself as far as learning, continuous learning. And then I said, and then, you know, it's a big thing in my life is risk or stepping out on faith. And, and I, it felt like risk or stepping out, but it wasn't quite that, right? I said, like, no, there's, it has more of an edge to it, but I couldn't think of the words to articulate it at the time. And I swear, uh, an hour later, I was sitting on my balcony in San Diego, looking out at the ocean with a butt of mine, and she had a business, and she was talking about doing something. I was like, come on, girl, you just got to, sometimes you just got to make a gutsy move. And I said, that's it, the gutsy move, right? Yeah. So like in your gut you know it's right. So, so it's right. Oh, but wait, oh, wait, there's more. Two, five, ten more seconds. Yeah, so go ahead. With a friend uh, a couple moments later, and she was like, oh, that's cool, because it has a double meaning. And your gut, you know it's right, but it takes guts to do it. And I said, oh, my God. So there you go. So I, I, I'm jumping all over this, and I'm jumping on because I'm excited. I, you know, I know gutsy. And, pff, there are no gutsy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and, but I love the, the two things of, you know, follow your gut and have the guts, which, right. you know, in your own life, I think that it's really important that people to recognize about someone like you. So it's easy to put someone who, you know, was a pro football player, was the cop that decided to go serve in the Marines, was the one that decided to step up and yes, I'm going to be a helicopter, was all that 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 sounds almost impossible for, for the rest of the human race, right? But you have also embraced this guts and gutsy in your own life. As, you know, being an entrepreneur takes a lot of guts. Right. No doubt about it. Being vocal and, and being able to live your passion takes guts. And you certainly... Uh, over the time that I've known you, which has been quite a while, you live your passion. It, talk about passion and guts, the, the guts to follow your internal kind of guide and the, the guts to take the action. Can you talk about that? Because you know, that let, is let really me talk about guts and action for a second. All right. Um, because there are a couple components there that, that you really hit on talking points that I, wa I really want to bring out my gutsy moves, what what my life looked like. And it's very easy for people to compare gutsy moves. Your gutsy isn't my gutsy. 
I mean, it was gutsy. It took a lot of guts for me to have a kid because I had different variables and things I was looking at. And there were my own fears. The woman who's on the show, 19 and counting, she has 19 kids and still having more. I mean, it's not gutsy for her to have kids anymore. Like, she, that's what she does. Uh, the, the one who stays in corporate America or leaves corporate America or decides to work on their marriage or even the silent gutsy, the game, the silent gutsy, the person who's battling cancer but hasn't told anybody about it and they're showing up to work every day and this person over there is complaining about a hangnail at the water cooler and they're thinking, do you even have any idea what it's taking me to just show up and you're right. complaining about a PowerPoint? right? Or a meeting that you had to go to, or you were stuck on the road. I mean, people live being gutsy in so many different ways. And there's even the component of losing your gutsy, right? Losing your mojo when you took that daredevil move. And, and a gutsy move isn't just a haphazard move. It's not a move without thought, right? Right, uh, right like that Malcolm Gladwell blink, right? That gut, your gut, ends, again, you know it's right, but it takes guts to do it. And you do it. And then you fall flat on your face because creating the breakthrough isn't about one gutsy move. It's about the series of gutsy moves that create the breakthrough. Many times people think, well, I just got to do this one thing. And it's not. It's, it's about the showing up again and again and again and again, doing Absolutely. what other people don't to have what other people won't, right? So here's the thing that I wanted to ask you, you know, because I think that you, you, you said something really important. You know, you take the guts, you get to take the risk and you go out and you're going to fall. You know, it, it, it happens, especially, you know, the, but it is the... I want to talk about that space between the fall, right? You fell and that there's a learning that goes on, which makes you start again. Can you talk about that space between the first gutsy move, the fall, right? So you have the gutsy move that you take, you have that fall. And before you take the next gutsy move, there's something in there that has to happen to propel you to take the next gutsy move. For me, it's about shifting into what did I learn? What about you? Right. There's a transformation moment. And that place where you fall into is called the gutsy gap, by the way. Right. When you've fallen into the gutsy gap and it's hard to get out. And sometimes you need a bridge from peak to peak. Right. Or that rope to pull yourself out. And the transformation, the learning that occurs is actually growth. When I whenever I feel pain, I always say, you know what, it, one day I was thinking about it because I was just in so much pain. I can't remember if it was personally or professionally. And I just said, you know what, I'm growing from this experience. These are growing pains. Yeah, and it really clicked. And I've never thought about pain the same way. Anytime I feel pain, it's always growing pains. That's exactly that's exactly how I frame it up to myself. I am being prepared for the next mission I've been called to do. So it goes back to the, the first message as well, right? Permission to engage. Not you have permission, you have permission to engage. I'm the only one that can give myself permission to get back up on the horse. I, you know, I, I messed up on the gutsy move or the gutsy move fell through. What did I learn from that? And, and what's the why? Why am I doing it in the first place? Is it big enough, big enough? Do I want it bad enough for it to propel me through the learning into that next gutsy move? All right, so let's talk about that big enough, do I want a bad enough experience because some people, sometimes people don't recognize their experience as a big experience. You know, mm -hmm. let, me, let, let me tell you something. Giving, uh, for me, giving up some of the food that I, the, choosing to live a different way, not giving up, because I, I choose to live right. in a different way, right, in terms of nutrition. It takes guts to do that, you know, because there are times where I'm sorry, there could be, you know, there are times that I'm battling myself within, mm -hmm. you know, no, not happening. No, been there, done that, not going on. When you're talking about the gutsy gap, and I want you to go a little bit deeper with that with me, and that decision that do I want it bad enough? Do I want big enough? You're also saying, aren't you, that it's our determination what's big for us, not necessarily from that what's out there, right? 
It's absolutely right. So is, do, you, do you have an acronym or something going with the gutsy gap? Because I love the gutsy gap. I love the, you know, there's gutsy. It's like, yeah, I like being the hero, but there's that gutsy gap that's powerful. I don't have any uh, you know, acronyms or anything like, well, I actually do have an acronym for gutsy. There are some things that the U in gutsy, for example, is uh, for uncomfortable. You have to be willing to get uncomfortable, right? But what, what, what are the descriptors of gutsy? What is gutsy? And for me, it's three words, courage, power, and grit. Everyone's big on uh, Angela's, Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. It's a great book backed up by great research and great science. My one caveat to it, which is why it's a part of gutsy, is that you can't be gritty at the wrong thing right? Wow. Tell me about that. Go ahead. Come on, bring it on. Yep. Um, Seth Godin, the purple cow, right? Or um, the dip, knowing when to give up the things that are not working, but everyone's going to go through a dip. What do you need to stop doing and what do you need to start doing? Gritty. You want to be gritty at the thing that's making you the money, the and not just the money as in currency, but it's the return on investment for whatever that is. If right, you're the treasure. Through a woman, you know, what is it that is turning her light switch on? You don't want to keep doing the things that aren't right. You don't want to keep that. That's the gritty in the wrong place. So grit, resilience. It's important. It's necessary. It's essential. And you want to make sure you're putting it in the right place. Um, it, you know, here's a business example. Kodak. They develop, their technologists develop the technology for the digital camera. Right, right, right. Their grit, they said, we are sticking with film. Why? Because we are a film company. Well, they weren't a film company. They were a memories company. They just developed film, right? But they didn't see the vision of, what they really were and they stuck with this versus creating a technology that would yes put their existing humongous business probably out of business and that's what they were looking at but you know security is the new risk that that business wasn't secure because the technology was moving on whether they developed it or not correct gutsy leadership are we willing to have the the courage to see we're off course and the guts to get back on so, courage to see, your, let's repeat that line again. The courage to, to acknowledge you're off course. I mean, for a leader, that's, that's big to say, I was wrong. I don't know. We should rethink this. Maybe there's a different way. There are so many leaders that those, those words would never come across their lips. Absolutely. That takes courage. So I, I'm looking to see if anybody's, we have any... Uh, all right, so we have some people that are just responding, and that's good. I wanted to ask you, you're going to be speaking to the Martin Luther King. You're going to be in front of thousands of people. Um, the city of Jacksonville has uh, hired you to come in, brought you in with a lot of fanfare. What is the message that you're going to be sharing? Uh, the message, I planned on writing my remarks probably right before I got there. I'm kidding. Uh, what, and, and, you know, a lot of speakers that I work with, you know, asking me this question too, about, do I write a, no, I don't write speeches. Uh, and I also don't speak on a multitude of things. I have that one core thing, right? Permission to engage gutsy going for it, the breakthrough, that's it. And I wrap it around there. Dr. King was the epitome of that. You don't have to see the entire staircase to take the first step. Everyone can be great because everyone can serve. I mean, when you look at this man's life, what he did, what he stood for, the, the new ground he broke, it's, it's incumbent upon us to continue to build on that legacy. And that takes guts. Pioneers sometimes have arrows in their back. Uh, you know, you, uh, as you were just talking, I was thinking about your gap. And what you were saying about, you know, when we go in and we're in that gap and doing that dip and how do we pull ourselves out? You know, Martin Luther King certainly had dips and gaps and, you know, and and needed to, how did you say it? He had to have the guts to know, he had, he had to follow his gut and had the guts to step out and step in. And I know that everybody watching right now 
is honored to hear your voice, honored to hear what you have to say. I know here in Jacksonville, excited to have you come in. All of you that are watching right now, Bernice is awesome. Refer her, bring her to your organization, hire her, um, bring the two of us in. Why not? <laughs> One of us will be an opening, one of us will be the close. Right. It all right. works out. And Vernice, I am honored to call you my friend. I'm honored that you chose to be with me and play with me today. Thank you but, so much. You know what? Before we go, um, because your people are just so amazing, I would like to offer them something to help them get going on their gutsy. What's their gutsy move? And it's an action guide called The Gutsy Move. And all they have to do is text the word gutsy, G-U-T-S-Y, to 72,000. Hold on, hold on. Let me write this out for the people because if I don't write it out, how will they know? Say it again. Well, I'll say it again. Text the word gutsy to 72,000. They will get an action guide showing them how to make their gutsy move. And they will also get a three-part video series on overcoming challenges and obstacles. Boom, bam, there you go. There you have it. Text so let me just show uh, this all to everybody. Add one more zero, add one more zero, add one more zero. Add one more zero. See, the combat pilot in me is coming out. You can't miss a, di a grid digit coordinate. So it may be going backwards, everybody, yeah. but it's G-U-T-S-Y to seven, two, zero, zero, zero. Uh, right. Thank you so much. You Absolutely. rock, you roll, appreciate you. Hope to have you again on the show. And remember, blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. We so got this. Love you so much. Glad that you're here. And everybody, I'll try to do this the right way now so that you know where you're at. You are with Pegeen. This is what I sing when I'm walking down the street. I've got the power, she's got the power, we've got the power, yes. Be feisty, be focused, be fearless. Have fun, begging, power, begging, power. This is what I sing. Stop, share. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. Peace.